we're back together again, grade 12. It's time for the last lesson about chemical equilibrium. Let's start by thinking of a few principles again. First, Le Chatelier's principle. A change in any of the factors that determine the equilibrium will cause the system to change in a way that reduces or counteracts the change. So, the reverse reaction will be favored if the reactant concentration increases, but the forward reaction will be favored if the reactant concentration decreases. These shifts cause a new equilibrium to be established. If we increase the concentration of the product, the reverse reaction will be favored. Or if we decrease the concentration of the production, the forward reaction will be favored. Also, an increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction, while a decrease in temperature favors the exothermic reaction. But these are not the only things that affect chemical equilibrium. We are going to learn about one more with Amira, as she tells us how pressure affects chemical equilibrium. We could describe pressure as the number of particles hitting the inside of a container. The more particles that hit the sides of a container, the higher the pressure. How can we increase or decrease pressure? Hopefully you still remember the gas laws. These laws say that the relationship between volume and pressure is inversely proportional. If we decrease the volume of a sealed container, the pressure increases. And if we increase the volume of a sealed container, the pressure decreases. Remember, the pressure can only affect the equilibrium of reactants and products in a gas state. Let's see how the change in pressure affects the equilibrium. We'll look at the Haber process again, in which we see that nitrogen, hydrogen, and ammonia are all gases. Here we see a sealed container with nitrogen and hydrogen. Altogether, there are four molecules of reactants. When we push the plunger down, we decrease the volume in the container. This causes the pressure to increase. Can you see that there are now two molecules of ammonia in the container? This is because the number of molecules decreases to deal with the increased pressure. The only way this can happen is if the reactants react to form the product molecules. We say that when the pressure is increased, the position of the equilibrium shifts to favor the least number of moles. And when the pressure decreases, the position of the equilibrium shifts to favor the most number of moles. I know an interesting reaction to demonstrate this. Good morning, Kanye and Rahim. I'm pleased that you're excited to learn about how pressure affects equilibrium. To see the effects of equilibrium, we are going to do a little investigation. First, let us look at the reversible equation of the equilibrium between nitrogen dioxide and dinitrogen tetroxide. Which side has the most number of moles? The nitrogen dioxide has two moles, and the dinitrogen tetroxide only has one mole, so the left-hand side has the most. Well spotted. So, if I increase the pressure, which reaction will be favored? Well, it should be the reaction that will lower the pressure again so that the position of the equilibrium will shift to favor the least amount of moles. So I think the forward reaction will be favored. Well, let's test your hypothesis by looking at this reaction. First, we had to react the copper with concentrated nitric acid to make nitrogen dioxide. A brown gas formed when we added concentrated nitric acid to copper filings. We captured this gas through a delivery tube into a syringe. Once the syringe was relatively full, we disconnected the delivery tube and inserted a plug to block the end of the syringe. As you can see, 
We now have the brown gas in the syringe. This is nitrogen dioxide. I'm going to push the plunger of the syringe in to increase the pressure. Rahim, you said when we increase the pressure, the forward reaction will be favored. Let's see what happens. The color has changed to a lighter brown, almost colorless. This is because the dinitrogen tetroxide is a colorless gas. Rahim, was your hypothesis correct? Yes, it was. If we look at the equation, the forward reaction was favored because the color went lighter. Very good. Let's summarize. If we increase the pressure, which reaction will be favored? The reaction that will decrease the number of moles will be favored. And if we decrease the pressure, the reaction that increases the number of moles will be favored. Good work. I think Kanye and Rahim found that interesting. Let's now look at the Haber process again to see how pressure can affect this equilibrium. There is only one mole of nitrogen reacting with three moles of hydrogen. This makes four moles of reactants. There are two moles of products. Which reaction will be favored if we increase the pressure? Of course it will be the forward reaction. The equilibrium shifts to decrease the pressure again. We learned in a previous lesson how we can use graphs to show the effect of change in concentration on equilibrium. Let's recap what we learned and then see what will happen to the graphs if pressure changes. Nitrogen was added to the equilibrium in this system causing a spike in the concentration of nitrogen. Then the forward reaction was favored to decrease the added nitrogen. Therefore, the concentration of ammonia increased. Now let's see how a change in the temperature and pressure will be shown graphically. An increase in pressure favors the forward reaction. That means the concentration of ammonia will increase. At the same time, the concentrations of hydrogen and nitrogen will decrease until a new equilibrium is established. In a graph of concentration or moles versus time, we do not get a spike of reactants or products when we change the pressure or temperature. We have seen how temperature, concentration, and pressure change the equilibrium position. But what about the use of a catalyst? Will that affect the equilibrium? A good question, because we know that a catalyst changes the rate of a reaction. But no, a catalyst has no effect on the equilibrium. So let's sum up. The only factors that affect the equilibrium position are temperature, concentration, solutions, and pressure gases. We also know that the equilibrium constant does not change if the temperature is constant. We've come to the end of the section on chemical equilibrium. I hope you will try all the questions in the rates and chemical equilibrium task video. Also use the guide to chemical equilibrium to give you more information and some help on this series. In addition, you may also find some useful additional information on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.